Hey guys, in this lesson, we're going to understand a bit more about another aspect of HTML, which is their attributes. And to understand that, we're going to learn all about the anchor element, which allows us to create hyperlinks. This is what an anchor element looks like. And similar to previous elements, we've got the opening tag and the closing tag. But there's something a little bit special about this one, because right now, if you wrote the code as it is here, this is not an active hyperlink. What you need is to add an additional attribute. And the attribute for an HTML element goes in the opening tag. It goes into the part just after the name of the tag and just before the end of the opening tag, where we have the closing angle bracket. And what an attribute does is it adds additional information to this HTML element, such as in this case, where this link should link to. Now, the way that we structure an attribute looks something like this. So we have the name of the element, and then we have a space, and then we have the name of the attribute. And afterwards, we have a equal sign. And after the equal sign, we have the value of the attribute. Now, you can have as many attributes as you want. And all you have to do is simply separate each one of them with a space and make sure that they all go into the opening tag. Now, in the case of our image element, if you take a look on the Mozilla uh, Developer Network documentation for the anchor element, then you can see it has the special attribute of href. And href is the part where we add the URL that the hyperlink should go to. Without the attribute, this is what you would see. It is an anchor element, and you do see the content in between the tags, but you do not see an active link. And when you click on it, nothing happens. Now, as soon as you add that href attribute and you provide it with, in this case, a target, so where should this hyperlink go to, then this link actually gets styled to show you that this is now an active link in the familiar blue with the underline. And at this point, if you click on it, it is going to go straight to this URL that we've specified. In addition to these specific attributes, so for example, in the anchor element documentation, we saw that it has all of these specific attributes which are relevant to this particular element. Now, we're not going to be using all of them, and some of them are also deprecated and no longer in use in HTML5. But in addition to these specific attributes, there are also global attributes that every single HTML element has access to. And if you look through some of these, an example is something like draggable, right? And it basically allows us to set true or false to say whether if the element may or may not be dragged. You can apply a global attribute to any given element. So in this case, we can apply it even to our anchor element. Again, we have the name of the attribute, we have the equal sign, and we have the value of the attribute. So in this case, the name of the attribute is draggable, and we've set it equal to true. So once this attribute is set, what happens is you can click and drag that anchor tag around. Now, if that attribute wasn't set, then when you try to drag it, it's just going to highlight the line and it's not going to allow that behavior. So we've learned that there are specific attributes which are reserved for only certain elements, such as the href for the anchor tag, and there are global attributes which can be used on any HTML element. So now let's try an exercise and see if you've understood how to use anchor elements and more specifically, see if you've understood how the HTML attribute is written in HTML code. In this exercise, we're going to create a website that shows our top five favorite websites. I've got the H1 already written for you, but what we're aiming for is something like this. So you have a list here and notice that this is actually an ordered list because it goes from one all the way to five. 
And the fact that the list is not highlighted in blue should show you that this is actually created using a list element and not a part of the anchor tag. It's not a part of the content. And the anchor tag only starts here. I want you to document your top five all-time favorite websites and feel free to Google or check mine if you want to see what they do. These are some of the websites that I go to when I'm bored or when I'm trying to look for some new ideas and new inspiration. So I want you to use what you've learned previously about creating lists and within those lists I want you to create five anchor tags each of them pointing to a different website that you like and if you've got everything working then you would end up with a website that looks like the goal and when you click on any of these links then they should take you to the correct website pause the video now give this challenge a go and once you're done come back here and I'll go through the solution with you All right, so how did that go? The first thing we wanted to do was to create a ordered list. We already saw how to do this in a previous lesson. We create our OL tags and inside we add our list elements. Inside the list element is where our anchor tag is going to go. It's an anchor tag which is inside a list element which is then inside a ordered list. So several layers of nesting that's going on here. Now, once you've created your anchor tag, then in between the open and closing tags, we add the text for our link. So in my case, it will be the name of my website that I'm linking to, which is called Product Hunt. And this is a place where you can see all the latest product launches and great websites and startups that people are building every day. The important part comes here when we create the attribute for that anchor tag. So remember that the attribute for linking a anchor tag is called the href and we're going to add it after the equal sign. As you start typing, you might see VS Code start suggesting what you're looking for. So if you pick the href and hit enter, then it will format everything for you, ready for you to enter the URL. If you're wondering why there are these quotation marks here, well, that's because it's actually a piece of text that we're going to add in here. So this is treated slightly differently in code. So whenever you have text, normally you will see them enclosed inside a set of double quotes. This is to differentiate from the reserved words like, you know, L, I or A or href. These are all special words. And in order to show that you're not creating anything special, you're just pointing to our URL, which is just a piece of text, we have our double quotes around it. Inside here, I'm going to paste in the URL of Product Hunt. And now I have myself a link. And if I go ahead and show preview, then you should see that we've got our list item one. And when I click on it, it goes to the website that I have um, linked to. You can repeat this process and link to all of your five favorite websites and you should end up with something that looks like this. And as an extra challenge, I want you to head over to the developer documentation for the ordered list which you're using in this current code exercise and look at the attributes. I want you to see whether if you can change one of the attributes, the start attribute, so that your list, instead of starting from one, starts from five. This is what you're aiming for. Pause the video, give that a go, and then afterwards we'll go through the solution together. Let's take a look at the documentation. We can see that for the ordered list, one of the attributes is called start. And in the explanation, it says all we have to do is to set this attribute to a number for it to start from. So that's pretty simple, but we need to remember where our attributes go. So they go in the starting tag, which is here. And the name of the attribute is start. 
and we can set it equal to five. Now, once we've done that, if we take a look at our website, you can see the order list now starts from five and ends at nine because we've changed that attribute. Hopefully that wasn't too difficult and you managed to get it to work. Have a quick review of the concepts that are covered in this lesson. And remember, we're always trying to repeat things that we've learned before, just to make sure that we reinforce those pieces of knowledge from earlier on. And one thing I like to do as I learn is to make some notes on the things that are new to me that I didn't realize before. So if there's something new in this lesson that you want to write down, take a quick note of it and then head over to the next lesson where we talk about image elements. For all that and more, I'll see you there.